Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a Digital Rebar version 4.7 training video specifically to demo Rocky Linux versus Universal Workflow. There's a couple of other interesting changes that we made in 4.7 that I will highlight along the way. I'm also going to speed through some of the gray bar time while we're waiting for ISOs to load or things to boot. So there will be some moments of silence while I'm not doing narration. So the first thing I need to do is have a virtual machine prepared for my demo, which I've already done. It's running on a system with CentOS installed, and I can SSH to that. and get the install running. One of the things that we did in 4.7 is the default install script now uses the universal uh, bootstrapping process. And that means that a lot of the things that you used to have to do to install Digital Rebar are now done automatically for you during this install process. It is going to download and bring in Digital Rebar. Uh, the bootstrapping process will also download all of the content packs necessary for you to run uh, Digital Rebar in Universal Workflow mode and bootstrap it. And that makes it significantly easy to get things set up. At that point, all you really need to do is get the final one or two steps for the system. So while this is running in the background, I can go forward and visit my new Digital Rebar site, same address, port 8092. I need to accept the certificate because we've generated a self-signed certificate automatically and log in with Rocket Skates, Rocket Skates or zero CK SKATS. You'll notice that the first thing you're being prompted to do is ask for a trial or a demo license. I uh, provide some basic information in here. We do not contact you from this information. This is for reference only. If you do want us to contact you, you ask for us to contact you and we will. I've already gone through this process and saved my license file, something I recommend that you do also. And then I just need to upload it into the system. From there, you're taken immediately to the bootstrapping wizard, which will walk you through things that are necessary to run a digital rebar ins installation. In the background, we've been completing this process and all of the initial install steps are done. We do have a bootstrapping provisioner. The bootstrapping provisioner is actually carrying on the process of installation, downloading an additional uh, dependencies and making sure that everything is set up correctly. And what you'll notice is as that runs, most of these checkboxes will be set for me. The one that won't is installing my own public key so I can access systems. And for that, I need to click the button, add SSH key, and upload my public key. From there, the other thing I need to do to get things set up in a, fit, in a bare metal provisioning situation is create an initial subnet. So to do that, I follow the link to subnets I create. This system has not added access to the internet on this IP address. And so what, I'm, what I wanna do is actually use my host network. When I created the virtual machine, I created a host network and a net network. I'm gonna use that host network to create the subnet for booting the additional machines. And when I do that, I don't wanna use this machine as a gateway because it's not the available gateway or DNS server, so I can just remove that. Everything else should work just fine by default. I add my new subnet information, and this will allow me to pixie boot systems, discover them, and then uh, convert them into whatever operating system I want. You can actually see the progress of the bootstrap discover as it's downloading components. I can check in here. This is a new screen in the 4.7 release that allows me to see and watch um, actions running on a machine from that machine itself. This is very handy. You can go back in time and check what things are going. You can also set step, set debug. Um, watch content is used for developers who are writing content packs and uploading them. The system will automatically reset if you add new content. Very handy as you're developing content and going through the process. So at this point, the system has been installing the core sledgehammer pieces. And I could actually get things uh, started from that perspective. Let's check in on my bootstrapping wizard. You can see I've got all these things checked out. I just don't have a machine yet. I have already created a machine for this demo in VirtualBox. I will show you what it looks like. So here's my VirtualBox system. I have a Rocky demo. In the settings for that, uh, it's a general system. I've given it four gigs of RAM, 
a 32 gig hard disk. And then additionally, the network here is using the host only adapter. It's the only uh, network configured for this system. And so my digital rebar server provides a gateway and the systems in, in the demo that I'm gonna run don't need to uh, have an additional NAT gateway unless that was your preferred configuration. So in this case, I'm booting. It's going to go through a basic boot sequence, uh, which involves loading our discovery image called Sledgehammer. And in doing that process, it will uh, show up as a machine in our systems list. It's given it an IP address from that subnet that I created, and it's just about to complete the provisioning cycle uh, for discovery and inventory. Since this system is designed in universal, if you're used to digital rebar from before, instead of using a discover base, it's using universal discover, which has a lot more built-in functionality for it. Um, one of the things that it's also trying to do here is it's trying to connect to my CentOS repositories of which I don't have any available. So what I need to do is tell it that I don't have any package repositories. I could do that for this machine, but in this environment, I'd rather do it for all the machines. And so I'm going to go into my global profile. This is automatically installed on all available systems. And I'm gonna tell it that my package repositories list is empty. So it's defaults to this empty string. That looks good. So now if I go back to the machines list here and tell it to go ahead and run, it breezes right past that step and continues on. Uh, I highlighted this because it's a common mistake for somebody to have a, a blocked in uh, set of VMs that don't have internet access. And we do see people needing to set that value as part of their demo. Uh, at this point, it's doing our standardized network LLP discovery, and it will roll through. What's interesting in the way universal workflow works is that at the end of each workflow, you have the opportunity to chain into new steps or new stages. And that is controlled by adding a universal application profile. In this case, if I pick the Rocky Linux universal application profile and add it to the system, it is uh, smart enough now that at the end of this workflow chain, it will know that I wanted to install Rocky Linux. And it is literally that simple to add that profile. And we have profiles for Linux, ESX, uh, Windows we do by image deployment, which is also its own universal workflow application, um, and a very easy way to uh, get everything wired together and working. So at this point, we're going through, systems are continuing to build up information about this, and the beauty of universal workflow is these are completely standard components, and because they are done in universal workflow, they are available to downstream stages in a predictable way. This approach allows you to create a much more uniform hardware infrastructure uh, where, or cloud infrastructure, where the things being done are being done in a consistent, repeatable way, and all of the steps are done. Most of them in this case are no opping because I don't have any configuration set, but I don't have to change workflow to then actually do work against a physical system. Here, what you'll see has happened is my Linux uh, selector is telling me that I do not have the boot media to install Rocky Linux. This is a completely new system and uh, I haven't done that. You would have seen me do it. So now what I wanna do is go and install that ISO. I don't have that uploaded. If you're wondering where to find it, uh, that list is in the bootems list, which is right here. And if I look for Rocky, Then what you'll see is I can down, this has a link to that bootm. This is the ISO that is available. I've already uploaded that. So for me, I can simply take and upload this ISO. Here's my Rocky Linux ISO and upload it. This will take just a minute and we will check back in when it's done. So the Rocky Linux is uploaded. Uh, it is a large ISO, just so you can be aware. Um, they have not yet created the minimal version, which is what we will ultimately use. Um, and when they do that, we'll save a lot of time in the install process for uploading that ISO. It's a good reason for you to download it once and then uploading it using this process instead of trying to have our system downloaded and uploaded every single time using the upload ISO's uh, digital rebar CLI command. So now that I've gotten that ISO loaded, all I have to do is uh, tell it to resume, continue running, and it goes through the process. You'll see this uh, 
demo VM that I have has already gone through. It rebooted itself. It's going to go through the provisioning process. It's installing it from Rocky. You can notice down here. And that will kick off the Rocky install process. Uh, once that is done, it takes a couple of minutes, I will have a Rocky Linux system. Uh, no additional configuration, no additional work is required. Um, and because it's universal workflow, in order for me to change it to something else, all I have to do is reset the pipeline that I want to be running, that universal application, and rerun uh, Universal Discover, and it will take the system all the way through the whole process. And the advantage of that is that if you make or change uh, components or hardware profiles or things like that, they're going to automatically be picked up because of this standard profiling system. So your experience with Digital Rebar is always the same. I run a universal discovery process, and then that will chain to the appropriate components that are necessary for whatever your target system is, whether it was a Linux, Windows, ESX, cloud systems, um, all of them have a common workflow pipeline that's influenced by the profiles and, and uh, parameters, the configuration that you've assigned into that pipeline. And this is literally that simple. Uh, I'm going to stop talking uh, and leave the video to uh, you to watch the install at speeded up time. So now I should be able to SSH into the system. And I'm doing I'm gonna do it from my desktop. Root at 192.168.56.10. That's the IP address that was handed to it. And you'll notice because I uploaded my SSH key, I am able to get right into the Rocky system and uh, use the infrastructure. Uh, just as if it was provisioned and that's everything. If I want to reset the system, all I would have to do here is come in, pick another universal workflow, or uh, go straight back to discovery. I could just remove this profile. And uh, so here I'll swap these. This is now the universal CentOS. Go back, reset, recycle the system, and it'll go through the install process. You'll notice it's already rebooting down here to be reprovisioned into another ISO. Uh, of course, I haven't uploaded the, uh, the CentOS ISO, so it will stop and tell me exactly as we did with Rocky. This is just one of the feature highlights of Digital Rebar 4.7, but we think an important one for the community because we really want to embrace these new distros and the possibility they create for the community. I hope you will uh, give Digital Rebar a shot, uh, shot and play with it a little bit. If you are interested in doing that, all you need to do is go to portal.racken, P-O-R-T-A-L, racken.io, and it will guide you through the install steps right on the, that homepage. Thank you, and we're looking forward to talking to you.